What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week 16 here in the SFL. Playoffs are just around the corner. Going to go ahead and show the playoff picture here. Probably go through the league standings as well, just to see who's on the outside looking in. But taking a look at the playoff race here, make sure to keep an eye out for your team, your team that your subscriber player may be on, and uh, see who's in if the playoffs started right now. So number one seed over in the AFC, obviously, yours truly, Toronto Thunderbirds. And taking a look at the two and the three seed, we got the Monarchs and the San Diego Aviators that we actually play today as well as the Memphis River Hogs. And then number five seed is the Salt Lake City Bisons that we just played a few episodes ago. Couple subscribers on that team. Got the Oakland Wizards, couple subscribers on that team as well as the sixth seed. And then the seventh seed is the Columbus Caps. Now over on the NFC side, we got the San Antonio Voyagers that we just played and just got absolutely crushed by. They are the number one seed over in the NFC. We got the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods as the number two seed, Anchorage Snowhawks as the number three seed, and the Huskies at the number four seed. So no subscribers on any of those teams, but we got some subscribers on the lower seeds here in the NFC. We got the Virginia Beach Blues as the five seed. We got the, it's I know it's the Antlers. I can't remember, Oklahoma City, that's right. Oklahoma City Antlers as the number six seed. And then the San Juan Tigers, bunch of subscribers on that team as the number seven seed on the NFC side of the playoffs. Then just getting a look at the full league here, still a few weeks to go. So if your team's not in the playoffs, you may be outside looking in and you may just have a fighting chance. But San Antonio Voyagers, best team in the SFL. Your Toronto Thunderbirds, not far behind. Then we got the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods sitting at 11 and three. Better record than us, but we, uh, since we're a division leader, they must not be. They might be in the, I'm not sure. But anyways, we're listed above them. So there you go. Redwoods are 11 and three. Virginia Beach Blues and a London, no, Montreal. I'm really messing up the squads today. I'm sorry about that. It's been a while since I recorded. Just got my laptop back. So I've been MIA for the last few weeks. Appreciate uh, your guys' patience. But Virginia Beach Blues and Montreal Monarchs at 10 and 4. San Diego Aviators, whom we play today. And also the Oklahoma City Antlers, 9 and 5. We got the Anchorage Snowhawks and the Salt Lake City Bisons, as well as the San Juan Tigers, Chicago Elks, Dublin Shamrocks, Vancouver Huskies, and Oakland Wizards, all at 8 and 6. So a big, big dog pile there. Some of these teams jockeying for playoff position as we speak. We got the Columbus Caps, Memphis River Hogs, Louisville Desperados, Honolulu Dragons, and Portland Steamers, all 500 at 7-7. Seven seven. So some big games in these next couple weeks for those squads, I am sure. Houston Oilers just got three new subscribers on that team, and they are making a playoff push. If they win out, they might make it. So got to keep our eyes on the Oilers, but we got them. We got the Paris Black Knights, Tokyo Golden Eagles, and Austin Lumberjacks all at 6-8. Then looking at our five and eight squads, we got the Melbourne Dreadnoughts, we got the Orlando Orbits, Albuquerque Armadillos, and Sacramento Sentinels, all sitting at five and nine. And our four win ball clubs, we got the Canton Condors, who they are on a win streak, if you could believe it. They were really, really bad record-wise, and they have won a couple in a row, but definitely probably too little too late for them. Then you got the St. Louis Bulls and Omaha Pioneers. And then finishing out with our three win ball clubs, we got the London Mounties. And then our division rival in our division, the AFC East, we got the Brooklyn Nighthawks at 3-11. and 11. Again, taking on the 9-5 and five San Diego Aviators. We just saw they are the three seed in the AFC side of the playoffs. No subscribers on the Aviators. However, we do have a brand new subscriber joining the SFL. Believe we are up to 38 subscribers in the league now so we have a new subscriber joining your very own toronto thunderbirds and that would be defensive tackle silas vaden or vaden hopefully i'm pronouncing that correctly vaden i'm gonna go with if i'm wrong please correct me in the comments but uh we got a new d tackle number 99 shout out at Cy the filmmaker in the comments six foot five 280 pounds out of auburn and Silas here, look at that 99 strength to go along with the 98 finesse moves. 
not the best in terms of block shedding or power moves. He is definitely a finesse guy for sure, but he will be playing alongside defensive tackle, another subscriber on this team, Jay Monstro. So we now have a two subscribers at the defensive tackle position that will be playing side by side. Hopefully they can help our defense that has been pretty sus as of late. And remember guys, if you would like to join the league, it's still not too late. I'll probably stop adding players once the playoff comes, but if you want to join, check the pinned comment below. We're having a lot of fun on this series, a lot of engagement, and you would get to see your subscriber player highlighted week to week and be a part of the SFL. So if you would like to join, please comment down below, and I will add you in the next episode. And again, just a quick little peek ski at the San Diego Aviators roster. Then we are diving into gameplay. They got Russ Wilson, Sam Darnold. Russ, uh, of course, the king of cringe himself is going to be uh, in the backfield manning the helm here. Travis Etienne and Chris Brooks. No J.K. Dobbins. He's hurt. So Travis, a uh, pretty viable option there at halfback, I would say. Mike Evans, always a reliable receiver. 1,000 yards every single year he's been in the league. Cortland Sutton is their number two. No Tim Patrick. They got Michael Wilson and Justin Ross. So pretty good receivers. Sam Laporta is their tight end number one. And Zach Ertz, huge age disparity there believe uh, Laporta was probably maybe 10 years old when Zach Ertz joined the league. David Bakhtiari went healthy, one of the best left tackles in the game, but that is a big, big win. Not usually healthy. Luke Whipler is the left guard. Ethan Pochick and Juice Scruggs are the centers to go along with John Runyon. Offensive line, aside from Bach, not really that good. George Fant, he's getting old and only decent. Defensive side of the ball here, we got Larry Ogunjobi on the left side. Carl Granderson. On the right side, nothing too special there. Ali McNeil, okay. Montrevious Adams, not that good. So defensive line, not great. Tuli Tuapoloto, the rookie out of USC, is their starting left out. Tremaine Edmonds and Jordan Brooks. So pretty good linebackers, I would say. Okay, good. Definitely good linebackers. Now that I see Joey Bosa, maybe in the twilight of his career, but still very good. And then some lockdown corners here. Jair and uh, Deontay Banks. Rookie, but very, very fast to go along with Bryce Hall. So their defense is actually pretty good. Eddie Jackson, always a very reliable safety. And Buda Baker, always a very reliable safety. So pretty uh, good weapons there. Quinn Norton, okay. Kicking the ball and Bryce Berenger putting the ball. So this Aviators team, I would say at first didn't look that good to me at least. But I would say not to be underestimated. And if they were to somehow beat us, we would be tied Record-wise, we are coming off a big loss, so got to have a good rebound game today. So if you guys are fired up for some more SFL content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Remember, at 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway for my subscribers. So without further ado, let's get on down to San Diego and get ready for the game. And speaking of our new subscriber D tackles, we are going to see them on full display first as the Thunderbirds kick the ball off to the Aviators. And uh, can we retain our number one seed that we currently have? I kind of like Aviators uniform. It's kind of slick. I got to be honest. I like the blue lettering and the name here. Russ, is he cooking this year? I mean, he's, uh, I don't know, TV dinner style cooking, maybe I would say. <laughs> Not doing anything too crazy, but at the same time, not having a bad season. Uh, Russ, does he still got anything left in the tank? In real life, that is. That's a question that's on a lot of people's mind. He's going to check it down to ETN. We got Antoine Winfield manned up, and he shut that thing down for only a minimal gain of one. That was Marcus Peters. And still dealing with some injuries here. Darren Waller, the big one. But we do got some of our key guys back, like Miles Garrett, for example, and subscriber Mike Oxmall so hopefully that will help a little bit Russ coming out of single back I think I'm gonna have Zach Cunningham become an extra defender and ETN that's gonna be a hold but do I accept it that's the question it's gonna be third and long we'll go ahead and accept it second and 19 I like the like that better than no, you know having them only need nine yards now they need to have two pretty good plays so I think that's probably the smart option Russ gonna survey the field and it's an inaccurate pass he was targeting Cortland Sutton which Broncos connection right there Russ and Cortland Sutton reunited on this aviators team good zone defense here boys we're gonna guess pass and shade inside and again need a big rebound game that Voyagers game was just that's the worst that we've played so far in this series last week 
Starting out good here as Russ throws the ball away. So fourth and 19, obvious punting situation. And they are going to bring out Bryce Berenger. And Thunderbirds are going to get the ball here for our first drive. We kind of struggled on offense last week, which a uh, nice move there from Peterson. Okay. I see you, Pat Pete. Nice punt return getting it into Aviators territory already. But, yeah, last week was was just strange. Uh, Jordan Love threw a couple picks, which uncharacteristic for him, I suppose. I mean, he's got 13 now. Yards, of course, are there. But nothing just seemed fluid. And it was pretty much a struggle from, I would say, opening whistle to closing whistle. So I look for the boys to bounce back here. Now, coming out of pistol, I am going to send Valdez Scantling here. And we are going to run it. The ball with subscriber Tubby McDouble out of Oregon State. He's been a godsend for us as of late. Tubby with the edge. Nice block there by MBS sealing it. And Tubby picks up a nice gain for his first carry of the game. Ball now on the 27. We're going to go to Tubby out of the RPO. I'm looking at Zay Jones. Nope, we're going to stick with run. Nice block there from our center, but uh, didn't really develop into too much. Tubby kind of struggled last week as well. We're used to seeing him. Go over the 100-yard mark. He's getting into a fight, throwing blows with somebody. I like to see it. Let the chippiness begin. But uh, So looking for him to have a good bounce-back game as well. Also, Olave didn't really get any targets last week, so we need to remedy that. But I'm going to go out of the backfield to Ricky Seals-Jones. A modest gain of four. That's going to bring up third and three. Big third down here for the boys. Let's go ahead and put Olave on a curl. Also, maybe Seals-Jones on this little drag or logan thomas what a heck of oh it's a breakup are you kidding me that was broken up by eddie jackson see that's the darren waller effect right there i know i said this last episode i think it was for a potential touchdown catch too but if that's logan Th uh no not logan thomas if that's darren waller he catches it but unfortunately it was logan thomas he dropped it we'll have to settle for a jay tuck field goal not the worst thing in the world but Missed opportunity for sure by the T-Birds. Here come the Aviators again for their second drive. AFC West team, formerly the Chargers. Obviously, if you've been watching the series from the beginning, you would know that I did a fantasy draft and relocated all 32 teams. So fun stuff here. Russ coming out with his fullback in motion. Going to be a give to ETN. He really can't get anything going to start here. One rush for negative three yards. As that thing is shut down by our superstar defender, Miles Garrett. Love having him on the team. Don't think he's played great for us necessarily by his standards. But, you know, played uh, serviceable for sure. And there's defensive tackle Vaden. He's trying to follow ETN there. I was usered up on him. Got some pressure, but Garrett does do the cleanup work. Aviators team not playing like a team that's trying to jockey for playoff position. And maybe I shouldn't say that too loud because we know what can happen. Great defense by Peters. I went for the swat there. Pro that could have been a pick for Peters, who I believe leads our team in picks. But the, there was no help behind him. No, no safety help at all. So had I missed it, that would have been six. Figured I would just go with the safe swat. And the result is pretty good. And we may get this ball in plus territory again. Peterson, I'm loving the, oh, I'm loving the punt returns. Look at Peterson go. Getting it all the way down to the 43. And Thunderbird's going to again start inside the Aviators territory. You see there, we clinched the playoffs. Aviators are three seed. And in the hunt, going to highlight the Houston Oilers because we just had three subscribers join that team. And they are looking to keep their playoff hopes alive. First to 10, we're going to go screen to Tubby. And I like it. Need some blocks. Oh, come on, man. Come on, Joe Tooney. Supposed to lead that block a little bit better. But I guess I'll settle for a gain of eight. I mean, I came out run. But there is not a single soul on Valdez Scantling here. So it's going to be a quick step drop. This could be a touchdown. This could be a touchdown. MBS, get in there. Man, play Rex on a 99. I mean, in fairness, a middle schooler could have seen that. There was no safety help. There was one deep safety. We had Verts. Safety was going to have to choose somebody and just had to let MBS get open on, you know, about four or five steps there. He did as MBS is a deep threat. And that is a great play by the Thunderbirds to go up 10 to nothing on this seemingly struggling 
San Diego Aviators team. So far, Russ is not cooking at all. We'll call him uh, Sushi Wilson because he is not cooking. He's not cooked at all. I'm sorry. That was terrible. Oh, it's a big sack there. It's Jay Mongstro. Subscriber D tackle playing alongside Silas Vaden. And look at Jay dancing on him. Big, big loss of six. Love to see that from one of our subscriber players. But the question is, can Russ convert here? Because so far, it's only been three and outs for him. They haven't done anything. We're going to go ahead and we'll use her up on Monstro. He just had that big sack. See if he could get maybe another one. Russ paranoid. He's flushing out. Oh, wide open there is the tight end. You got to be kidding me. Or no, I'm sorry. Receiver Michael Wilson out of Stanford. He was wide open. Russ flushed out of the pocket, gave himself a little bit of extra time. And that that is 100% by far the best play for the Aviators today. Now, first and 10, Russ staying in single back. Haven't really seen him go gun too much. Bobby Wagner with pressure and Yaya Diaby mere inches from a sack, but did force the throw away. So far, man coverage has been the move. So Russ in the shotgun, we're going to go, or no, I'm sorry, zone. Zone coverage has been the move. It's ETN and oh, LaMarcus Joyner missed him. Wow, had a chance to get him. And ETN is going to convert. LaMarcus Joyner was, I mean, breathing down the neck of ETN. But somehow ETN was able to avoid him. Been pretty much all runs, too. I mean, a few good passes by Russ. That big third down conversion, obviously. But been mostly ETN. And that's going to be a touchdown probably from Sam Laporta. And it is. Okay. So first two drive drives were some stinkers by Russ and the boys. But that drive was dangerous dangerous indeed put a little bit of pressure on us we are still up but gonna have to make sure we respond because aviators might be starting to get hot here come out single back here on first down mesh concept on the field so gonna be eyeballing these drag routes there's mike oxmall shout out at rams fan in the comments one of our four subscribers four subscribers on the thunderbirds we got tubby mcdouble we got Mike Oxmall, we got Jay Monstro, and of course we have Silas Vaden, who we just added today. Now, I'm going to go ahead and audible this. I don't like the outside run on this one, so let's actually have Tubby go inside and see if that proves to be a little bit more fruitful. Oh, it wasn't at first. He had to shut a tackle there from Larry Ogan, Joby, and luckily he did because he does pick up the first down, Joey Bosa. With the stop three yards to go till the promised land i thought about streaking olave but i'm gonna go ahead and leave him on the curl that's a pick that was a bad pass from love that's tremaine edmonds logan thomas got open on his route too it wasn't the worst of reads really but it was inaccurate from love we'll take a second look at it i mean yeah see now that was a weird madden animation too i will say you know he kind of glitched around him but, I mean, right there is where Logan Thomas is. The Tremaine Edmonds is right where the ball's at. And that's not good. Love starting to throw picks. He has had a great season. I'll be the first to admit that. But he does have the interception bug as of late. It's a screen pass? No, it's not. Uh, Russ all of a sudden coming alive. Hitting Cortland Sutton. And we may be in some dangerous territory here as that is going to take us to the end of the first i mean exciting first quarter 10-7 looking like it might be 14-7 as uh, aviators are starting to pick it up and that interception that i that i threw i'm not gonna say we that was all me really or maybe it was just madden graphics or something i don't know i'm blaming jordan love but what i'm saying is that was a dagger shot to the heart aviators about to take momentum here which they haven't really had that all game. Russ scrambling out. Come on. Safe dive there. Picking up five. Go ahead and uh, go mid blitz here. See if we can generate a little bit of pressure. Maybe one of our new subscriber D tackles can get it. Nope. Russ is carving us up now as he seems to be on a little bit of a tear. And that's a reception and a first down from Zach Ertz. I mean, it's like two different teams, right? Night and day difference. Got to watch watch uh, this right side here wouldn't be surprised if etn goes that way and he is actually just going to go straight up the gut and we were able to stop him there shut down by zach cunningham to bring up second and ten and here on third and five i'm thinking zone blitz might be 
the right move here. We'll see what Rush does out of the single back. He he might try to scramble again. He is. Somebody lock in on him. It's Jay Monstro again, I believe. So EJ is playing great. He's been kind of quiet so far this season. But not sure if that one's going to count as a sack. But what it does count for is three points as opposed to six. Probably seven. Block from Jason Verrett. So close. All right, J-Love. Shake off that pick, man. We got work to do. First and ten. We are trying to put ourselves together. A good drive. And Zay Jones might be the one. That was a dangerous pass. Dangerous pass indeed. Now, I did pass. Lead him down. So, that was on me if that would have been picked by Jordan Brooks. But, uh, jo luckily, Jordan Brooks didn't turn around because that could have been picked. But at the end of the day, it was a nice, nice pickup by Zay Jones. It's kind of stick with Tubby a little bit. You know, he was what was kind of uh, getting us going there early on in the game. So hopefully he can continue to do that. Tubby truck somebody. Going to truck Eddie Jackson. Tubby is no stranger to trucks. 5 for 41 for our big power back. And that will get us to the 41 of the Aviators. Love going to come out shotgun here with McDouble to his left. I'm going to streak Thomas. But might be looking for one of these drag routes to get open. It's Mike Oxmall. Nice route. Love now 6 for 8 for 94 yards. And Mike Oxmall with his second catch of the game. RPO has kind of been our bread and butter. So I don't like the fact. I wish we were on the right hash. That would be a little bit better. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and stick with Tubby. And I did not like that one from jump. And I definitely don't like it now. As Tubby is going to go down to the turf. And that will leave Kareem Hunt and Melvin Gordon as our running back. So hopefully, Tubby can come back because we're definitely going to need him. It's the big one here, boys. Third and ten. We're going to go a little PA crosser here and maybe have Olave. Nope, it's going to be a sack by Bosa. Yep. Still in field goal range because we got one of the best in the business. Tubby will come back too. But man, oh man, this uh, defense and the offense for that matter. Turning on the Jets. Let me go ahead and not miss this. Got that good old slow down kick arc. I love it. And we do take the lead, albeit by three. But uh, defense putting the clamps on us. Jordan Love, you know, not really looking the best. I'm not loving it, so to speak. Brandon Staley, of course, this team, formerly the Chargers, so... He is their coach. Uh, no Jim Harbaugh yet. We'll have to wait for Madden 25 for that. And we'll see what the Aviators have in store for this drive here. I kind of like... They're coming out gun. Not going to go 4-3 blitz. We're going to trust our zone coverage to play well here. And Russ has ETN to his right. So it's going to be... It is going to be an ETN run. And look at Monstro, man. Jay freaking Monstro all over the field. Forcing a big third and seven. Yes, pass. Shade underneath. We got our nickel package in and just need to play good zone coverage, please. Russ going to scramble and the pressure is there. Okay. So this is the Aviators team that we saw on drives number one and two. Not so much these last few drives, but that is more like it. Our defense did step up big, put the clamps down. But what does our offense have in store? Can Jordan Love figure it out? Tubby. I know he came back, but is he going to be okay? Will he get re-injured? Yeah, will we fumble the ball and turn it over? We did fumble it. Don't know who picked it up there. That was Patrick Peterson. Oh, no! They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. No! Give me a booth review, man, please. Oh, my God. What happened, Pat? It's all those jukes I'm doing in the backfield. No. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Patrick Peterson had some good returns today and looks like uh, Jordan Brooks may have been the one to pry that ball free. It's definitely a fumble and the Aviators did certainly fall on it. So, wow, what a huge, huge momentum swing. See if Russ and them can capitalize on it. That's a great curl route there by Sutton. And drive starting out pretty good following the fumble from us. Definitely a fun one, uh, a little bit closer than what I was anticipating, but that's okay. That is okay. SFL highly competitive. Look at Mongstro back there again. And Miles Garrett with a vicious hit on ETN. I'll tell you what, man. I don't know if it's the addition of a fellow subscriber. Jay Mongstro, our, rook, our subscriber out of Iowa. He's been a little quiet, but he is coming alive in this one. 
and playing great. Jordan Poyer, I'm usured up on him. Somebody get to him, please. No, it's Mike Evans going to score. Man, that's the, that is the second time that we had Russ flushed out of the pocket and he was able to throw cross body and find his target. That time it's Mike Evans. First catch of the game for him too, I believe. Certainly a big one as for the first time today, Aviators are going to take the lead. And I am in no hurry to move this ball down the field here. We still got all of our timeouts. A minute 40 to go. I'm not even sure if passing is necessarily the right move. I mean, maybe something, you know, underneath like that. But, yeah, I don't want uh, – I do not want the Aviators to get the ball back. Could be a quick step drop to Olave. Uh, I don't like it, so we're going to go underneath. Great defense there by Bryce Hall. Aviators D is locked in right now. Got to get something going here. We're going to go TE attack. I like to roll out on these plays typically, but uh, I'm not going to be able to on that one. Logan Thomas had a step there on Tremaine Edmonds, but it was an inaccurate ball by Love. And what do you do here? What do you do here? Nothing really is working. And I certainly don't want to give the ball back to Aviators in this situation. I don't want to go screen or something like that. Um, yeah, this is this is going to be a tough one, it would appear. It's definitely going to be a tough one. Maybe probably going to be looking at the right side as my reads. We got Zay Jones open, and that's another pick. Oh, my God. You got to be kidding me, man. It's Buda Baker this time, and I don't know if that one was on me or not, but Jordan Love has the interception bug. I don't like it. I don't like it. This Thunderbirds team has faced little to no adversity so far in this series, and we are being tested these last couple of weeks. I can certainly promise you that. And that could be, ooh, Marcus Peters. Chance for a pick, but still good D and an inaccurate ball by Russ. And now, actually, we have a chance here to get the ball back and maybe, <laughs> hopefully, atone for some of our sins. We got our big dime package in. Uh, press going on there on Mike Evans. I don't necessarily like that. It's going to be a design rollout from Russ of all the, or a design run from Russ of all the plays to call. See, Brandon Staley is still their coach in this uh, SFL universe here. That's why you're fired, Brandon, because of your suspect play call. Why would you do a design run? I mean, seriously, like if your goal is just to, you know, take time off the clock or something like that, just do, uh, you know, Fullback dive or a halfback dive. Don't risk getting Russ injured in the process and maybe a fumble or something like that. But the big question here, can we not throw an interception? Don't know the answer to that question. And score before halftime. We're going to start screen pass to Tubby. Instant pressure. Tubby's got it, though. Turning up field, looking for blockers. He has them. Going to go ahead and call a timeout with 45 seconds to go. Ooh, Olave is getting pressed, so show me... Show me Eddie Jackson coming down to play the run, please. Show me Eddie Jackson. Eh, he didn't, but I'm going to go to Olave anyways. Eh, it's a good thought. Not enough under that pass, though. And now second and 10. Why does this uh, defense, though, for the Aviators, they just feel unstoppable. And Tremaine Edmonds there in the middle of the field causing all kinds of havoc. MVS, I need you to hang on, brother. Thank you. We're going to go hurry up here. Uh, taking a little bit of time off the clock. I don't like that. We're calling the same exact play that we just called. So got to be a little uh, hurry here. Kareem Hunt going to catch it and go out of bounds. Nice play and nice uh, adjustment for Kareem to catch that one. Still got one timeout too. So we, we definitely can be aggressive. Um, I do need Logan Thomas though, however, to block. Probably going to be looking for Zay Jones. Oh, he got bumped on his route. You got to be kidding me. Oh, my God, dude, he got pumped on his route. Oh, that's our third pick of the game. And he was he was getting open. But look, where's it at? Look, where is Zay Jones? Yeah, Zay Jones going to get bumped right there. You see that little club move, swim move thing that he did? That split second just threw off the timing. It's a pick by Jair. We got three interceptions in this first half, but somehow we're still in the game. I don't get it. Hats off to our defense for that, but man, I got to figure it out. Jordan Love's got to figure it out. Coach, 
Damon Sanders has to figure it out. Everybody's got to figure it out. I'm going to go into the locker room, but a lot of question marks are going to be uh, asked from Coach Sanders. Throw it deep because I need these routes to get open. And as far as our game plan, I did defend the short pass. That didn't really work too well. So switch it up and go defend the medium pass. And I mean, deeming this as a must score drive and no turnovers, please. No fumbles from Patrick Peterson. You're a big part of that too, buddy. MVS needs you to hold a bigger block than that, brother. And uh, here comes Jordan Love with his three interceptions on the day. Two half of football. Look, first half was a disaster, yes, but go ahead and shake it off here. We're going to go RPO to Oxmall to start. Nice juke move. Wow. Left uh, the defender there, Deontay Banks, in his tracks. And may want to think about going to Tubby a little bit more because he, he was the lone bright spot of that offense in the first half. And I guess there's no reason to really go away from him, but just absolutely nothing on that play as he is shut down by Larry Ogunjobi and others. And the question is, with a struggling offense here, what do you do in this situation? Screen is shaking now as well. So that is absolutely lovely. Uh, thinking Logan Thomas, but that pocket opens up. Yeah, we'll go to Logan. Oh, my God, dude. Tremaine Edmonds is a problem in this one. Tremaine Edmonds is a problem, and I know how terrible of a call this might be, but I'm going to go screen pass on fourth down here. I know probably going to come back to bite me, but I just feel like we cannot let these aviators... It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Bruh. Score, and they're going to... And what is going on with this Thunderbirds team, man? We still have the number one seed in the AFC, but we are not looking like it right now. I can assure you of that. And I realized that was a terrible call. I will take full responsibility for that. You don't go for it on fourth and three in that part of the field. But, I mean, I just felt like we couldn't give the ball back to the Aviators, you know? They end up getting the ball back anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Not liking our chances in this one, Jordan. Poyer. Oh, my God, dude, this game. Oh, that was Chris Brooks, not even Travis Etienne. I, that that was on me. I had a shot on him with Jordan Poyer and just completely missed it. And now the Aviators, have, if they didn't have full momentum before, which they did, they certainly got it now. And we are at risk of, they could potentially overtake the number one seed, I think, in this game. I mean, they'll be tied with us record-wise if, uh, if we lose this game, which it's looking like we might. Patrick Peterson, do not return that. Maybe a little play action seam, right? I'm going to have Kyle Juszczyk block, but maybe look in Logan Thomas's way. He hasn't really been getting it done. Love, deliver an accurate pass. Thank you. Sweet baby Jesus. Oh, my God. Boy, did we need that. Let me tell you what. 42 yards on the play. Coach is saying I formed PA cross. That might actually be the move uh, because Zay Jones usually gets open on these plays. But we are going to need some protection. Zay is open. That could be a touchdown. Thank you. Right back in it. All right. We're right back in this ball game. Zay Jones with the end zone shot. Coach is saying go for two, obviously, to make this a three-point game. So we are definitely going to do that and going to be looking probably at Olave or Thomas. It's or no, Oxmo or Olave. Yeah, it's Olave. Okay. How about Olave? First catch of the game, and it's a two-point conversion. Might need to look to get that young man involved as well. All right, come on, defense. I need you in the worst way possible here. Really need you to step up. It's going to be a, why is uh, ETN not on the field anymore? And why can we not freaking tackle Chris Brooks? That was Jordan Poyer again. But like, it's Chris Brooks, the rookie out of BYU. He shouldn't be doing this to us. And I need that Jay Mongstro pressure that we had earlier in the game. Is ETN hurt? I don't know, but whatever's going on, can you bring him back in the game? Because this was not happening when Travis Etienne was on the field. Maybe it's fatigue. I don't know. But Chris Brooks is absolutely destroying us. Absolutely destroying us here. 
And we got to definitely watch this uh, left side here. Uh, good call because it is going to be up to the left side. And, man, I missed the tackle with Wagner again. Luckily, Yaya Diaby was there to clean it up. But Chris Brooks looking like prime AP in this game. And now third and ten, we got to, got to bring in the field goal unit. No doubt about it. So hopefully play some good zone coverage. I'm going to have Leonard Floyd kind of man the middle of the field. Russ rolling out. Where is he going to go? Come on, converge on him. Thank you so much. And that is going to bring out uh, Quinn Norton and the field goal team, which is a big win for our defense because now if we score a touchdown and make the extra point, we will take the lead. It's been a fun one. And hopefully our offense just looks the way that they did on that last drive. All right, I need me some McDoubles in my life, Tubby. I'm going to ask you to shoulder the load for us, please, because our passing attack has been incompetent at times. Six-yard pickup is pretty good. I will definitely, definitely settle for that. Um, but at this point, it's like I'm almost scared to air it out with love. Like, three picks, not playing the best. Yeah, I mean... Gonna have to at some point, I'm sure, but not really the biggest fan of that. And I am the biggest fan of Zay Jones, as he is now starting to get it going. Love now at 241, big first down by the T-Birds. Tubby again here with the fullback use check in the game. I'm gonna also motion over Logan Thomas. Gotta snap this ball, but hopefully with some good blockers, this could be something. And look at Tubby still going. That's what he does, should have been about a six yard gain. Instead, he turns it into a first down. Again, we're in field goal range, but that's not what we want at all. I need uh, Yves check to block for me. See Joey Bosa over there, probably going to be looking for some pressure. Let's just go to Kareem. Does Kareem have the outside? He does. Thank you, Kareem. Such a great route runner, of course, for a running back. He's been doing that for a very long time, both with uh, the Chiefs and the Browns. And Kareem's earned himself some more reps here. Let's go this time. Outside, we're going to motion uh, Olave out to the left a bit. And also ID up this guy's the mic. Ricky Seals-Jones, I need you to hold a block, man, please. <laughs> of course, why would I even ask him to do that? He is our third string tight end for a reason. Loss of two on the play. I'm thinking play action rollout. It's got to be Olave or Zay Jones. One of these guys, preferably Olave. I'm going to try. for him Olave hangs on clutch catch haven't really heard too much from Chris this game but we just he was loud on that one we need a touchdown here no way around it in every way shape or form we need a touchdown not a field goal and Tubby can you power through he did power through gonna get this thing all the way to the one yard line one yard to go to the promised land come on i'm trying to put the mcdouble effect up here and there it is look at those mcdoubles raining down tubby gonna tie the game and justin tucker can give us the lead and how's about that we scratched and clawed our way all the way back into this one defense has played really good as of late but just going to have to ask a little, little bit more from the boys. And ever since freaking Chris Brooks came in, we can't stop him. He's tearing us up. We'll see if Russ goes to Brooks. He will not. Heavy pressure in the backfield, and it's Garrett. Clutch on the sack. Thank you so much. I don't know Russ, what, what Russ was doing. He easily could have thrown that ball away. No doubt about it, but he did not. And that is a huge loss for the Aviators. We'll see if Russ snaps this. He will. Where is he going to go? He's going to check it down underneath to Brooks. Big hit by Garrett. But that will bring up a big third and 11, and that will also bring us to the end of the third. Thunderbirds now have the lead after having it for a while, losing it, losing it big, too, by two scores, and then scratching and clawing our way all the way back into this thing. But it all starts with the defense on this play here. And can we get Russ and the boys off of the field that is the question if we do we'll have a chance to really open this thing well i have no idea what just happened there except for the fact that dj reed got cooked by Cortland sutton what in the world was that how on third and 11 do you let a man get that wide open dj reed you've played good for us buddy you certainly have i mean what am i seeing bruh what am I seeing? 
He just lets Cortland Sutton run right by him. That is a benchable offense right there. A fireable offense, some may even say. Not going to fire DJ Reed, but too many more plays like that, and I might. I'll be honest with you. That's terrible. That is absolutely terrible. The last thing that could have happened. And now it is back to a seven-point game following the conversion of a two-point. <laughs> A.K.A. the two-point conversion. I don't know why I called it the conversion of the two-point. Sounds like a mystic fabled thing. I'll tell you what else is mystic and fabled. DJ Reed playing defense on the field because he did that to the zeroth degree on that one. Tubby out of eye. Let's see if he can get some blockers. Nope. And that's the one thing I'll say about Tubby. He's great. I mean, a great back for us. But if things get kind of clogged up back there in the backfield, you know, he doesn't he doesn't have the juke ability to really make anything happen. Like he needs he needs that first block to be set. If that first block is set, I mean all bets are off. Like he could go all the way, but if it's not set, ah, Zay Jones couldn't hold on to it. And this is going to be a very precarious situation indeed as it's third and 10. And I mean there's 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 not too many worlds where we can really pump this ball back. Like I'm thinking maybe Olave on the curl again. Possibly MVS. Uh, we're going to go to MVS. And he hangs on. Oh, wow. Jordan Love dropped it in the bucket. That was not an easy pass at all. Hey, look, don't go anywhere because this game is absolutely nuts. It's wild. I have no idea what type of finish that we are in for. But I can tell you what, it is exciting and stressful all at the same time. Tubby with a gain of four almost into the red zone come out single back here from the 21 not gonna curl olave this time instead i am going to be looking for logan thomas and he catches it wow high degree of difficulty on that catch and pass logan thomas with two big ones for 57 yards and we got ourselves a fresh set of downs here and it's imperative that we we don't want to take too much time off the clock though because um, San Diego is going to get the ball back no matter what. And assuming that they score, Tubby's going to score. Second touchdown of the game. But assuming that they score, which they very well could. I mean, they've scored 35 points today. Why would I think any different? We're going to want to make sure we have some time left of our own to engineer either a game tying or game winning drive. But maybe our defense can just make a good play here. And give us the chance to drive down and get the win for ourselves. All right, Jay Monstro, Silas Vaden, I need you guys to uh, step up. Let's get some pressure on Russ. That is when our defense was at its finest. That's not pressure. That is a big catch by Zach Ertz for a first down. Thinking I'm going to have a spy on the field. Because um, if nothing else, we can use that as someone just to man the middle. Even if he's not watching Russ, maybe you know a drag route or something gets open out there. Or a little in-breaking route. Something like that. DJ Reed, nice tackle. But that's going to make it third and inches. And I think we got to go pressure with a press. If somebody can get in the backfield here, it's probably going to be a run to Brooks. We know he's carved us up pretty much all day. It is going to be Brooks on the pitch. I mean, it was good defense. We did limit him to, you know, not picking up a massive gain. But it was still a first down. Good running by the Aviators. Nickel Blitz does seem like a good call here, so call it we will. Ah, nice curl route there by Sutton. Yeah, I tried to come back with Jordan Poyer, but it was a nice curl route by Sutton. And how about Corlin Sutton? He's been the man today. He has definitely been the man. And we got to go pressure, but I got to watch. I got to have somebody watching the outside run. That's kind of what I'm... Most worried about, so Diaby, he's there. Oh, it's a play fake, actually. That could be six. That could be six. It's not going to be six, but they are going to get the ball to the seven. And we're trying to prevent seven. Six receptions by Cortland Sutton, too, for a buck 54. Uh, there's just no way the Aviators don't score, which, oh, Garrett trying to get pressure. Yep, that's touch. That's touchdown. Cortland Sutton is vicious in this one. And all we can do now is hope to go down and tie you know, we're playing for overtime, um, and we can't let the Aviators get the ball back either. 42 points put up. 
How much did the Voyagers put up last week? Probably 42. 40 something. And I just don't understand this defense. We got talent. We are aging a bit, I will say. But there's no excuse for us to be this bad. And Patrick Peterson, don't fumble. Thank you. Come out gun here. Might be looking for about a scantling on uh, this corner out here, which he might actually have that. Look about a scantling. Oh, trying to stay in bounds. That was a good pass. Trying to stay in bounds and turn it up field. But unfortunately, his uh, own momentum kind of carried him out. And I'll tell you what, I'm not ruling out. If we get, if we score, I'm not ruling out going for two. I know that's probably a crazy decision, but I'm not ruling it out. Tubby needs you to have like five more points of speed, brother. But again, gain of four, I will take it. And third and one, clearly four down territory. No doubt about it. And if we play our cards right, first things first, let's pick this up, right? But uh, play our cards right. Maybe we score with not a lot of time to go. And again, I would probably go for two, but Tubby is stonewalled. Oh, no. That's not good. Quite possibly the ball game here. We're going to motion over Logan Thomas. I'm putting it in the hands of Tubby, and I'm trusting him. Tubby, look at the power and the speed. How clutch was that? Tubby goes over the century mark here. And, yeah, I'm kind of kind of trying to get this clock to tick down and may just try, if we score, right, may go for two. I don't want to go to overtime against this Aviators team. They're playing too good, and I don't like it. Come on, Tubby, on the screen. He's got it. Turning up field. Picking up eight. Jordan Love now close to 400 yards. And again, right now, just trying to kind of chip away at that clock. Coach is saying draw with Tubby, and I like it. Uh, so we're going to let this clock keep on ticking down here a little bit. Come on, Tubby. Show me a first down run. He got it. Graham Glasgow pushing the pile forward. And you absolutely love to see it. Coach is saying go for the pass, which we're going to have to at some point. But right now, I'm going to continue going run. We're going to keep ticking that clock down. I know we got to score. Trust me. I know exactly what's going on here. Awareness is at 99. This is a big one here. Almost don't want to score right away, but we, we got to score. Tubby going to be stopped. 16 seconds, going to call a timeout. Third and two. I need Olave going to put him on a slant. Doesn't get too much better than this. Let's see who wants to get open. Let's see who wants to get open. Please, who is it? Is it Ricky Seals-Jones? It is Ricky Seals-Jones. Oh, my God, man. We, he's made so many boneheaded plays for us and dropped so many passes. And it's the SFL, baby. Of course, I'm going for two. If I don't get it, whatever, they can ridicule us. Coach is saying, kick the field goal. Yeah, get out of here with that. It is Y stick, and I'm only looking at Chris Olave. If we don't get it, it's game. Even if we get it, it's not necessarily game. But let's just get it, please. Olave, I need you. Oh, it got batted down. Oh, who was that? Who was that? I think it was Ali McNeil. It was a bat down. Oh my God. Was it Aleem? Yeah. It was. He hit Jordan Love at the last second. Look at that. Oh, had he not done that, that was probably going to be a catch and a completion by Olave. And I can't even be mad at that because I chose to go for two. I mean, I guess we squib kick it here. Maybe uh, try to force a, you know, fumble or something like that. That's about the only shot that we have. Oh, my God. They're going to field it cleanly. Yes, they are. Come on, force a fumble. Do something. Make him fumble it. Make him fumble it. <laughs> hey, that's what you get when you gamble. When you gamble... You're either going to win or you're going to lose. And that time we lost. I'll tell you what, it was a fun, exciting game, though. Very curious to see what that's going to do for the old playoff standings. And the Aviators are going to eke out a one-point lead. Can't even believe it. Look, our team had some fight in them, but we should have never been in that position to begin with. 
And it's the three interceptions by Love. Yes, he had 386 through the air. That's awesome. But look at Russell Wilson. Four touchdowns and no interceptions. Tubby played great. 124 on the ground, 5.1 yards per carry. Two touchdowns, but it was not enough. Chris Brooks also, heck of a game. And receiving, it was the Cortland Sutton show. Zay Jones played good. Oxmall had some catches. Valda Scantling played pretty good as well. But it was it was the Cortland Sutton show all around. Dax, we had one from Jay Monstro, Miles Garrett, and they had Joey Bosa, uh, Jair, Tre Tremaine Edmonds, and Buda Baker all had picks. And we had a fumble too as well. So that's how our game is going to end. But more importantly than that, Let's check on the subscriber stats around the SFL here for week 16. Inverted score here for the Antlers and Sentinels. Antlers do eke out, uh, or not eke out, they completely dominate. We're the ones that eked out a loss, but what am I saying? I don't know. I'm saying Rocky DiBernardo, subscriber quarterback, had 249 yards and two touchdowns, so that is pretty good. And then we have a subscriber corner here on the Antlers, and that would be one C. Ben, and he had five tackles and a forced fumble. So nice job from C. Canton Condors still putting together a nice win streak. I, I mean, like I said, it's it's too little too late, but you have to admire the fight in them. So we get a look at subscriber receiver Braden Keys, who has played very, very good here in the SFL. Eight catches for 72 yards, no touchdowns, but apparently he did exactly enough uh, what the Condors needed for the win. And then we look at our subscriber safety duo, Eli Sakowitz here. He had eight tackles and a pass deflection. So that is good to see. And Mike Collins, seven tackles. So our safeties were all over the field, propelling their Condors to a big win. Virginia Beach Blues beat the Paris Black Knights in what appears to be a really exciting game, 28-22. We get a look at subscriber QB Jaden Hayes here. A buck 76 through the air and two touchdowns and a pick. And then also his uh, receiving partner here. Where's he at? Caleb Hayes. Two receptions for 26 yards. And we get a look at Yeezy Fuentes. No targets. I think he's hurt. I'm going to go actually check that after the stat update because my man should be getting more catches. I know you want to. Thinking that you may be hurt, and we will check on that here after the stats. And freaking hashtag Houston Oiler push. They are on a three-game win streak now, I believe, as they beat the Tokyo Golden Eagles. Subscriber QB Lucas Thomas, rookie out of Texas. 302 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. And his running mate here, uh, where is my running back subscriber, Austin Gutierrez? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I think he, he is hurt. I did check that pregame. 100% he is out one week. So sorry, Austin. I apologize for that. And getting a look at the receiving subscriber, Kyrie Brooks. Two receptions for 24 yards. But the Oilers just keep finding ways to win. Ah, the Dublin Shamrocks, their streak comes to an end. They lose to our division rival, the Austin Lumberjacks. And getting a look at our quarterback duel here, Michael Yakin, 11 yards, one completion and one attempt. So he may have gotten hurt because, yeah, they brought in Clayton Toon. So I think Yakin got hurt. Jesse Buzo played decent, 222, 2-2. Two two. Interesting stat line. But those two picks probably, uh, you know, what uh, did him in at the end of the day. And we got some subscribers on both teams here. James Briner, four for 50. No touchdowns, but his team did get the victory. And then we also have a subscriber running back on the Shamrocks. Where is he at? That would be Uku Tree Rat. No targets, no receptions, no yards. I don't know what's going on with the coaches, you know, in these depth charts, but they are uh, messing things up for sure. And then Ty Royal, Smoochie Wallace, the corner, two tackles. And two tackles. Orbits and the Tigers. Tigers, uh, they're keeping their playoff hopes alive. They're in it right now. And they continue to uh, to keep winning. So that's going to definitely help them. Uh, we get a look at subscriber running back Johnny Waters. Nine rushes for 27 yards and a touchdown. So that is good to see for him. Nick Stoyer, he was hurt. Back now. Three catches for 46 yards. You love to see that. And we also have St. James tight end. Hey, he's on the field getting playing time. That's all that matters. One reception for five yards. And defensively, Flash Parker, the free safety, five tackles. And we have two corners here on the Tigers. That would be the Loves. So King Love, one tackle and no big plays, it would appear. Um, Dior Love, no stats, unfortunately. But 
the Tigers do get the victory. Voyagers did win, albeit only by a touchdown to the Melbourne Dreadnoughts, who we play in two weeks, right? That's a division rival, and we are going to be able to see this guy live in action two weeks from now. Receiver Alexander Klebeck. He had three catches for 20 yards, but unfortunately, his team did take the L in this one. Nighthawks and Armadillos. Nighthawks do get the victory. We play them uh, next week, as a matter of fact. They're last place in our division, but they do get the victory here today. And uh, subscriber quarterback Derek Derigosa here, 305 yards, one touchdown, and a pick. So that is uh, definitely good for him. And then on the Armadillo squad here, we have receiver Jaden Taylor. Three receptions for 50 yards and a touchdown. So good, good stat line by him. And then Bjorn Jeffrey, the tight end, one reception for six yards. And then cannot forget about our defender, Arturo Esquivel. He had three tackles, but one big tackle for a loss. And uh, so good job by subscribers on both squads there. Wizards and the Bisons. Wizards destroyed them. Uh, they're doing very good in the playoffs too. I think, what, what were they? The, the fourth seed maybe, I want to say. Not too sure, but uh, Mason Buchanan, he's played great since entering the SFL. 320 through the air, one touchdown, but it was the two interceptions that did him in. And then this this guy right here, ever since joining the, AF, the, the AFL, wait, what? The SFL, he has played lights out. I am Al Musa, 124 yards, 10.3 yards per carry, and a big touchdown. Also, Nico Petey on the Bisons, he had a touchdown and also 54 yards on the ground as well. So that was very good to see. And then defensively, Michael Briner, only one tackle, but apparently it was a tackle for loss and then also a big deflection as well. So I'm sure that he did help his uh, team win in some capacity as they did limit the Bisons to not a lot of points in that one. And then the Chicago Elks drop to the Mounties by four points. And uh, we will get a look at our subscriber running back, Darian Wolcott. He had a good game, 18 for 76 and a touchdown. Average 4.2 yards per carry, but unfortunately, it was not enough to help the Elks get the dub. Yep, and my suspicions were correct here, and I'll just go through. Maybe we'll look at all the injuries. I can't control when that happens, but Yeezy, fractured shoulder blade out 10 weeks. So uh, maybe, you know what, if someone's injured, maybe I'll go into, uh, go into the roster and, you know, get you back in somehow, you know, change a player or something like that. Um, I think he's... Only real injury that I can remember. Who else was I looking at? Lumberjacks, any subscriber injuries there? Yeah, Michael Yakin, dislocated ankle out seven weeks. So no worries if your player is injured, especially if you're in the playoffs, I will make sure to go in and, uh, you know, fix that. Maybe I'll just auto generate or, you know, change somebody else into your player just till you come back and then I can change it back. But rest assured, I will make sure it works. Austin Gutierrez, yeah, out six weeks. Injuries suck, but they are a part of the football. So they are a part of the SFL. But don't worry, I'll get you guys back in here so you can see your player on the field. But that was an exciting episode, 10 and 5. Are we still the number one seed? That's the question. We are no. And it is the Aviators. Those blasted Aviators took over our spot. But how about the Houston Oilers now in the playoffs, though? Hey, subscriber alert there. We're number two seed, but these next two weeks in Virginia Beach Blues over there, number two seed as well. But these next two weeks are going to be crucial. Lots of playoff implications all across the board. And I don't know about you guys, but I cannot wait. So that is going to do it for me tonight. But as always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.